Hey YouTube, got another video. Today we're going to be planting the 125. Uh, a good friend of mine just dropped off a bag full of plants. Going to see what we got and should be enough to at least get this thing started. So let's take a look. All right, got my bag of plants here. Let's uh, take a look. This should, holy cow, definitely be enough to get me started on the 125. Now I know that most of this is going to be Hydrophilia uh, Angustifolia. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Uh, look at the size of this. Holy cow. Tell you one thing, he wasn't kidding when he said he had a lot. How about that? I don't even know how I can uh, show you a reference on how much this actually is. This is ridiculous. Wow. All right, well, looks like I got one piece here. Rubber banded together, so get this all apart and see exactly what we're looking at here. All right, well, this is a ton of plants. Uh, let me show this to you a little better. So this is the low boy, which is a four foot tank and two feet wide. So I've easily got, a, you know, probably six feet of plants here because there is still a bunch of stems that are kind of bunched together here. So, and uh, we're definitely pushing two feet tall on these guys. Down here, it looks like we have some other types of stems in here, which is cool. But yeah, super awesome, amazing. One of the best background plants, in my opinion. Uh, you guys know, some of you may know, I used to keep this in the background of my 75 gallon crypt tank, but it was growing too fast and it kept getting in the way of the overflow. So I tore it all out and then I moved it to a different tank and it all melted back on me and that was pretty much the end of this plant. There's still a few stems down in here behind this uh, star grass. But uh, hopefully this will do well in the 125. I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna do many plants over here, just all along the back here. Um, actually, I don't know if I'll be able to put plants behind this because they're spawning right now, which is why you don't see the Honduran red points. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see them, but you see the male there. So they're down there guarding their eggs, so I might just have to stick with he, kind of here in the middle for now. Oh, and of course, we always got to show the L75 when I see him out and about. It's a Parapleco L75, so pretty awesome. All right, so it's actually the next day. I let the, these are all the plants that I just showed you, and I've been letting them float for a day. And now I'm going to drop the water level down and uh, probably have to move some stuff around again which is not going to make my Honduran and Red Points happy because they're spawning right now down in there somewhere. But uh, nothing I can do about that. So get this water level dropped, move some stuff around, and start planting. So as you can see, got the water draining on the tank there. Got a little bit more to go. Definitely going to have to clean uh, the tops on here. See, that's pretty nasty. Uh, but while I was waiting for that to drain. I wanted to show you a new toy I picked up and that's this uh, 14 gallon bio cube. 
It's actually in really good shape. It was used. Um, I think it was $60, $70, somewhere around there. And uh, in case you don't know, you know, top flips open. But it does have also upgraded LED lighting. Uh, the return pump is also upgraded, so it's a lot better flow than the factory one. And uh, as you can see, it's just in really good condition overall. And the plan is to do salt in here. So I used to have a 14 gallon bio cube, but it started leaking, and so that was salt as well. I ended up tearing it down and pretty much taking all my salt stuff and trading it in for fresh water stuff. But I still do have a bag of salt, because I couldn't get anything for that. So, now I'll be trading in these guys in the back tank there, my plecos and guppies. I'll be trading it in for live rock, sand, salt supplies from here on out. So it should be a lot of fun. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. That's the problem. And uh, also don't know when I'm going to find the time. So hopefully I'm not showing you another tank that's just going to sit around for months. <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so I got quite a few plants in here now. I'm gonna work on getting it filled back up and kind of filling in once I get it back up. So I'm gonna, definitely gonna have to add more light. This uh, Phoenix Plant Plus uh, actually has been broken for a while. I've just been running on these two fixtures, but for this plant, uh, I'm probably gonna have to figure something else out. Go out in the garage and see what I can find probably just be like a T8 shop light or something like that. We do have some uh, male bonding going on down here, as I like to call it. Not really. Just this guy's challenging the other guy. This guy definitely guards his spot back there, though. I'm starting to get big enough, I might have uh, some spawns soon. So as you can see, I did take off the Marine Land hang on back filter. I moved the Aquion down here. Because um, I do have the Fluval hooked up down there. So eventually I'll be getting rid of this one too. Probably next time I do a water change. Um, and I don't know what happened to all my uh, plastic pieces for the back of the glass here. But I uh, just kind of got it ghetto rigged right now because of those uh, splash tetras will def definitely jump out so I'll have to dig through the garage to find some of those um, also you'll notice that this light did kick on so it's not that it's completely broken it just takes like three hours to turn on so they're all hooked up to the same timer and these ones turn on right away and then eventually this one turns on like three hours later so obviously there's a problem with the inverter or something hopefully my house doesn't burn down but I'm still going to use it I really couldn't find anything better in the garage, so I might look into getting the new Fluval, but we'll see. Those are pretty expensive, especially in, a, in the four-footer. But, uh, you know, I'll sit back here and let you guys have a look. It's a little bare back here because of the hang-on back filter. I couldn't put many plants back there, otherwise it would have just suffocated the intake, so... Once I get that taken out, I'll be able to trim some. Uh, I still have a bunch of plants left too, so I won't run out anytime soon. I think the next thing on this is I might actually put CO2 on this tank. I do have an extra five pound tank and regulator, pretty much already all set up, that I was using on the 75 gallon Crypt tank, but uh, that ran out of CO2 like six months ago and I've never refilled it because it's Crips. What's the point? But this stuff here, well, it came from a tank that had CO2 in it and so it'll just grow a ton faster and hopefully it'll help out the dwarf sag because this stuff hasn't done anything. It just sits there. But those are going to be the basically the two plants in here. The uh, Hygro in the back and the dwarf sag in the front. 
And uh, you guys know I keep it dark over here for all the plecos that hang out in these rocks. So, you know, I might get some stuff that spreads over there. I do have an Anubius here. There's Java Fern Needle Leaf down there. So that low light stuff will be fine over there, but not this stuff. So I thought I'd brief, briefly touch on the products I'll be using in this tank, specifically uh, fertilizers. So I do have a couple of the Aqua Vitro line, and uh, I have the Activate, which is uh, phosphate, and then I have the P Premier, which is potassium. And you notice it does remove chlorine and chloramines. Um, so this is what I use in my planet tanks instead of like Prime or Safe. And then you guys know I use Easy Green. I've showed this stuff plenty of times. All right, so a lot of people do ask me why my Easy Green is not really green. And uh, you know, I've always told you I use, I kind of hack it, put my own stuff in there. Well, I'm finally gonna show you. And it's basically this, it's from, uh, where is this, Green Leaf Aquariums. Uh, it's, all the, it's all the micronutrients. I just add it to it because my water is really bad. Um, so it does kind of change the color of it a little bit. Well, quite a bit, because I do put a lot in there. But it's what I use in here, and it's working well for me. So I'll also be using it in here. But yeah, I'm not going to tell you guys how much or measurements because uh, I don't want anyone else doing this because of me and then killing all their fish or plants or whatever. But th that's what it is. That's what I put in there. Uh, and then I'll also add a little bit of iron which I know is basically useless and gone by the time I actually use it, but you know, whatever. Iron's like a dollar for a hundred thousand pounds, so who cares? But yeah, so my Easy Green, the Aqua Vitro, and uh, hopefully I'll be adding some CO2 to this uh, this week. All right, YouTube, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. I hope you had fun hanging out with me. Um, don't forget about the contest going on at AquariumCoop.com. Just click on the top right on the contest link and get your daily entries in there for the $100 gift card. And uh, I'm kind of deciding what I want to do next. So I've got the 50 gallon low boy or a 33 gallon long. One of them I'm going to make into a pleco tank and I haven't decided. I kind of want the 50 gallon long but that'll mean that the uh, Shelly's have to move out to the 33 gallon. Um, what did I say? 55 or 50 gallon long? I meant the 50 gallon low boy. Um, so yeah, those will have to get moved to the 33. And I think this 50 gallon low boy uh, will make a pretty good pleco tank. And I just think it's time to switch things up a bit. So I might do that. Let me know what you'd rather see. So yeah, thanks for hanging out again, and I will see you all next time.